Hello, it's Ozzy again, and I'm back with another top five. This time I thought I'd do the top five best currently working directors out there. Now, after such an overwhelmingly positive response from my overrated directors video, I thought this would be the perfect companion to kind of see what I do like and what I don't like. So, let's get started. Now, first of all, we do have to get a couple of uh, honorable mentions out of the way. Uh, I know a lot of you will be thinking, why wasn't this person in the list? Well, mainly it'd be due to the fact that they just haven't done enough great films, or maybe their career is a bit inconsistent, you know? I think basically I'm judging this all on how many great films they've done, and usually kind of how varied they are, how different they are, so let's get a couple of these out of the way. George Lucas, yes, he may have directed Star Wars and some of the biggest films ever made, but he's not really the greatest director. Uh, you can see that with the prequel trilogy. He just can't direct actors. He's a great writer and he's a great cinematographer, but that doesn't necessarily mean that he's a good director. Martin Scorsese, yes, he's done a lot of films. He's done a lot of varied films, but he's only really successful in his crime films. He did The Irishman not long ago, which was another good film, but not great. I'd still say that his best films are The Departed, uh, Goodfellas, and Casino. Other than that, he comes close, he makes a good film, but he doesn't make great films. I think if anything got closer, it would probably be uh, The King of Comedy. Denny Villeneuve, a lot of people love this guy. They see him as like the new Fincher or the new Nolan or something like that. And I do think he's great. I do think he directs a good film, but sometimes his film lack that bit of punch. Um, I think Arrival and uh, Prisoners are very good films, but not great films. I think his best film is probably Enemy. Uh, just the psychological kind of thriller, and uh, Sicario. Um, let's see if he does better with uh, Dune that's coming out. It looks really good. And I, I did like Blade Runner 2049. I just don't think it's great. So he just needs to make a couple more films before I put him in that great director's chair. And another one is Wes Anderson. Yes, he's made a lot of great films. Um, he's you know, Rushmore, uh, Royal Tenenbaums, Fantastic Mr. Fox, uh, Life Aquatic with Steve Zissou, uh, Darjeeling Limited. He's made so many really good films. Uh, my only problem is that they are somewhat similar, all the films. They are uh, his style. It is kind of wacky, unique approach, but... Um, I don't know, I, I do. I would put him in this top five if I could, but I, I just think there are other directors that have done more. They've uh, proved more consistent and uh, they've just know how to kind of handle the craft in many ways, shapes and form. He can only kind of do his thing, which I don't know, it's not necessarily a disadvantage, but uh, it's not what I like to see. I like to see uh, directors with a bit of variety, a bit of variety, sorry. All right, here it is, number five. Now, this was a tough one, and I had to kick out two really big directors in the space of another. So, like, James Cameron was one that I was thinking of putting on, and yes, he's made some of the biggest films ever. He's made Titanic, he made Avatar. He used to be the lead uh, horse in the race of making the biggest films of all time and before uh, Avengers Endgame came along. Um, but my problem is that he just doesn't direct enough. I mean, he just goes and he sits back and he doesn't do anything. And I don't think even Avatar was that great. He's making Avatar 2 and Avatar 3, which I'm sure will be epics. Uh, hopefully they'll be better than the first one. But uh, yeah, um, as, as much as he's done Terminator, Terminator 2 and Aliens and True Lies, which are all great films, I, I just don't think he's good enough to make the top five. He's not out there doing enough uh, work these days. Uh, Ridley Scott is another one I really wanted to put on. Uh, he's made some of the, you know, some films that have really shaped culture and um, changed the way we think about films. So he's got Alien, he's got Blade Runner, he's done Gladiator, he did uh, Black Hawk Down. There is, there are these top four films. They're so good in the way they're done. He's such a meticulous filmmaker. It always looks great, uh, but he's a bit hit and miss. He's not as consistent, and he's quite reliant on the script, and he just pumps out films every year. So. Yeah, you're going to get a good share of films in there, uh, but as much as I want to put him in the top five, I just couldn't do it. It's just it's too hit and miss. So who did make it? It was Quentin Tarantino. Now, I get a lot of hate for loving Quentin Tarantino. And honestly, I don't think he's the best director out there. That's why I put him in the number five position. But I just think he is uh, very unique. And he's kind of like Wes Anderson, where he kind of does his own style, but he does it 
he does very different films. He does a kung fu film. He'll do a war film. He'll do a gangster film. It always feels uh, the same kind of Tarantino style, but in two different genres. And it's great to see his best films. I would say uh, his best is easily Inglorious Bastards, then Pulp Fiction, then I'd probably say Kill Bill Volume Two, one of the more introspective films. I really like that film. It's kind of got a western vibe to it. Um, and uh, Death Proof, I think Death Proof is easily one of his best. It's very different. The start is awesome. Kurt Russell's amazing in it. Probably got a bit of a weaker ending, but I really do like Death Proof. So, yeah, I think Quentin Tarantino is easily number five, one of the top five working directors today. Number four, Richard Linklater. Now, you might not hear about him. He doesn't always do the big blockbusters, and he's probably not as well known as some of these directors I'm saying, but he is a very consistent, uh, very methodical and just a great filmmaker. Uh, he's done the Before trilogy, which is probably the best trilogy ever made, uh, Before Sunrise, Before Sunset and Before Midnight. Just this great little trilogy that explores this couple that goes through their first chance meeting in uh, Europe to so, uh, meeting again and then kind of being married and seeing how it lasts. Like it's 10 years apart each time, but every film it's just them talking the whole time. You just follow them around in some of these beautiful locations. And it's just amazing. It's amazing how effective it is. It's amazing how uh, insightful it is and how much it makes you think. I mean, Richard Linklater, he writes these films and he's got such a philosophical mind about existentialism and all the things that happen in the world. And it's very relatable. And I, every time I watch it, it's it's it never gets old. The uh, conversations and the characters just get deeper and deeper. Um, they might make a fourth. I don't know if that's the best idea, but I, I really love this trilogy, I think. Just keep it as it is. And, of course, he did Bernie with Jack Black, Jack Black's best performance. It's hilarious. And it's this differently made kind of film where it's half kind of a documentary and half a dramatic film, but just really entertaining and quite heartfelt. And also he did Everybody Wants Some, which is a follow-up to one of his debut films, Dazed and Confused. Uh, I think I just personally connect with Everybody Wants Some a bit more. I think he just hits the characters and he hits the uh, theme of college and going to university on the head. I mean, it just takes me back to when I went to college and uni and I, I love it. I love hanging out with these guys. It's got a bit of a slow start, but once you get into it, you're laughing, you're having a great time. He just makes these very unique kind of films and I'm just glad that someone has done this. I love his mind. Uh, he has been a bit of a miss lately with some of his films, but uh, he's definitely easily one of the top five working directors today. Number three. Oh, this guy used to be number two, but he's he did a film recently that wasn't my favourite, and that's David Fincher. He, uh, he is easily... One of the most well-known directors working today. He's got, uh, he's kind of shaped the industry ever since he was a kid. He kind of blew everyone away with his commercials, then his music videos, and then his films. Obviously, he started doing uh, films with Alien 3, and it was like the worst experience of his life. But he hit back with Seven, Fight Club, uh, Zodiac, The Social Network, and Gone Girl. Gone Girl I watched recently. I think it might even be his best film. That's probably him, you know, him at his peak. Just I love the way he shoots films, uh, the kind of the darkness to it, the way he uses light, and his characters. He always deals with kind of macabre uh, subject matter and deep, dark stuff, but it's so cool. It's so stylish. It's so slick. He's like a hitman of the directors, the man. He's just so accurate and his craft is, you know, second to none. I think he's probably even better than Ridley Scott in that fact. It just all looks, it's what every other director and cinematographer tries to make their films look like. I mean, that's how good he is. He's just got such a good eye and the way he directs his actors, he does take and take after take, but he always gets strong performances. I mean, these films are just kind of very cult films. Everybody knows about them. Everybody has seen them. Uh, very few people kind of connect the dots and realize that he's done this one and this one and this one uh, because as much as it, he has, does kind of have a, a dark tone and theme to his films, they are very varied. I mean, he did The Social Network. He made that into kind of a, a thriller almost uh, and it's just about people talking about making a, a, a software program or a, an internet application. He's really brilliant and I have I really look up to how he does films and his attitude in, in meetings and interviews is so laid back. 
Um, yeah, he just seems like the king. I really wish I could have put him up a bit more. But yeah, as I said, like he, he did a mank recently, which is got all the hallmarks of his creativity and his, his fantastic crafting, but it just was a film that didn't hit as hard as some of his other films and he's capable of so much more. And I don't know, I got the feeling that he's kind of laying back a little bit and, you know, just kind of doing his own thing. He's not focused on making the biggest film he can, but to each his own. I, I, I still think he's easily number three, the top three directors working today. Christopher Nolan in number two. Why? Because Tenet is amazing. Tenet is one of the best films after the last decade of just average, meh, regurgitating the same old stuff. He is just this absolutely unique and original voice in film that completely changed the game. I mean, his uh, take on Batman Begins shaped all comic books, every kind of reboot and restart that came after it. Um, his soundtracks, what he worked, when he's working with Hans Zimmer, he creates these big booming scores. And it's just everyone's copying him. Everyone wants to know how he does what he does. And his films are, will blow you away. I mean, David Fincher might make a really well-crafted film with you know great emotion in it. But Fulton Nolan's films will blow you away. They'll completely warp your mind. They'll have you thinking about them again and again and again. And what he's done with Batman is amazing. I mean, I think he's actually got the best track record of any director in terms of consistency. I mean, he made Memento, which was amazing. Then he did Insomnia. Uh, I think Batman Begins, The Prestige, The Dark Knight, Inception, and The Dark Knight Rises. So that's seven films in a row that are amazing. That's that's a fantastic track record. No, one, no other directors had so many hit films one after the other. And I think after even The Dark Knight Rises, he, you kind of see him wearing a bit thin. I think he just kind of overworked himself. And I don't think he wrote all of Dark Knight Rises. And even some of the directing gets a bit sloppy. Uh, he did Interstellar, which is good, but that's got its own problems. And I think Dunkirk was quite boring, to tell you the truth. Uh, they weren't bad films. He's never made a bad film, I don't think. But he's hit back with Tenet and it's just all, it's like he's back in the chair again. He's, he's been revitalized and it's so good. It's so magnificently done. Look out for his next film or whatever he's going to do next because um, he's got eight great films under his belt and he's not as old as most of all these other directors. He's probably the youngest one. So he is really pushing for the top spot. If not, the top person was just amazing. But Christopher Nolan is... You can't fault him. You can't say that he makes average films. He makes incredibly original films and impactful films. They hit you right here and right here. Uh, yeah, you couldn't ask for a better director to be growing up with and especially what he's done. With. Just, just look at what he's done to superhero films and every kind of reboot. He's broke the ground on so many things here that, um, you know, you can't just ignore it. You can't say, oh, I don't want to go see another Christopher Nolan film or treat him as anything as rubbish because he's just done so much and everybody loves it. Not to say follow the bandwagon, but you can't deny the imprint that he's had. Uh, yeah, he, he's, he's definitely right up there. He's number two and I don't see him going down anytime soon. <laughs> Number one working director today is, of course, Steven Spielberg. I mean, the man has done so much for film, so much for everybody's childhood. He created the blockbuster with Jaws, and ever since then, he just keeps making a completely new blockbuster that will blow your mind and just shape your whole life in many ways. Jurassic Park did that for me. I saw that in the cinema. I was blown away. I kept thinking about it. I went to dinosaurs. I explored every dinosaur. Um, I just, he makes you go nuts about things. He did Indiana Jones, one, two, three. I think one and three are my favorite. Um, he, he can do a great little kid's film. Ready Player One is perfect for that, he, that recently. And that's amazing. It's one of his best films in a long time. It's, it's 3D. Yes, it's got some corny bits, but that's not denying how much fun you have watching that film. And then he can go do something absolutely serious. He can do Schindler's List which is serious but thought-provoking and really well done. I mean, the craft is better than anything else. Uh, it, it's, it's absolutely brilliant. Um, he does other films like sci-fi films with Minority Report, which kind of shaped how Apple make their uh, products and stuff like that. And then he goes off and he does Hook, a fantasy one. Like, he can just do anything. 
It's amazing. And every film he makes, he's just so good at manipulating your emotions. I mean, something like Hook can really have you just absolutely crying. At, and, and it can be sappy. It can be a bit corny and cheesy. But that's not denying how freaking good he is. Uh, he's done over 10 great films. I can't even count them. But let's try and go through them. Jaws, Indiana Jones 1 and 3. Uh, Hook, Jurassic Park, Catch Me If You Can. Uh, Ready Player One, Minority Report, uh, Schindler's List, Saving Private Ryan. He's done the best great, uh, war film of all time, War of the Worlds. Uh, yeah, he is the best director, if not um, now, of all time. I think him and Hitchcock are really battling it out for all time best. But yeah, I don't think anyone's going to come close to hitting Spielberg's record. And you've always got to be excited when he makes a film because you just don't know. Yes, he's not as consistent and he's had some duds. Uh, but the amount he's made more great films than anybody else, and so, yeah, you gotta pay your creed and owe your life in many ways just to how he shaped a lot of people's ways of thinking, their imagination, and their creativity. He is he, he's an unbelievable filmmaker, the best in my opinion, and that's my top five. Uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later.